if we're talking about what Luther's doing, let's use a different term. Yeah, how about reformation? Let What are we talking about when it says Martin Luther deconstructed, mm -hmm. right? I mean, wh uh, when has anyone in the last few hundred years used that term to describe Martin Luther? Well, nobody. What we talk about is reformation. He was reforming Christian doctrine. I prefer the word when we're talking about Martin Luther. And again, I've been thinking about this all week. What's the difference? What Martin Luther did was, you can call it deconstruction if you want, but I don't think that's a helpful word. I think what he did was more like restoration. Mm -hmm. Restoration. What do I mean? Well, he was, he was deconstructing or re-examining his faith in light of scripture, in light of something that he believed to be true. Okay, look at Martin Luther took it, as a given that God had communicated, God had revealed himself in scripture. Scripture has authority. It's his starting point. Yes. Compare that to with what's going on with a lot of what's called deconstruction nowadays. That's not what people are doing. Some people are doing that, sure. They're going to scripture like the Bereans, opening it up and saying, is this in line with what the Bible teaches? great. That's what Luther did. What are people doing generally, or the majority of people who are deconstructing aren't taking that approach? It's a different approach. They're deconstructing in light of sociology or history or, you know, critical, critical theory. They're deconstructing in light of personal preferences. Mm -hmm. They're deconstructing in light of personal experiences. They're deconstructing in light of and then you fill in the blank, but it's not in light of scripture. And so, I mean, again, we can say that what Luther did was kind of like what's going on in the sense that he is re-examining and questioning and changing his mind on something, but how he's going about doing that is fundamentally different than what's going on with a lot of the deconstruction stories that are happening out there, okay? Yeah. Again, this is uh, anecdotal. I mean, I'm just like everybody else trying to figure this out. And so we're looking at every all these different stories mm -hmm. and um, I'm finding it very difficult to come up with a story where someone looks like the Bereans, okay? Right. Um, yeah. Where they're saying, you know what? Yeah, we gotta, we, we gotta re-examine this doctrine. But, so are you go and are they go okay let's see what this text says there are whole books written they're not quoting scripture they're deconstructing but they're looking at well this uh, this doctrine has oppressed people mm -hmm. i mean you did a whole you did a whole podcast on this with neil shenby We're, we don't like complementarianism oh is it because the bible doesn't teach it because that's a different that's a question we need to go to what does yeah. the bible teach no they're saying no, because it's been used by oppressive white pa patriarchy to oppress women. That's why it's got to go. Yeah. Okay. Well, wait a second. That's not what Luther did. Right. So you can't. So so what you're doing, you can again. We're using the same word. They want to call Luther in the tweet. A, he deconstructed, but that the process is completely different. The how he deconstructed that he deconstructed okay maybe you want to call it that but when you start looking at the how question mm -hmm. it's fundamentally different and yeah. so that's why i think if we want to get rid of the confusion i think if we're talking about what luther's doing let's use a different term yeah how about reformation because that's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, that you might know, be a good That's a term. good word. We might try that one out. Well, and that's the thing I was sort of mentioning earlier is we're so quick to take the world's words and categories and try to apply mm -hmm. them. And, uh, you know, in the Mama Bear Apologetics book, um, Hillary came up with this uh, phrase, linguistic theft, which has to do with mm -hmm. taking a word, redefining it, and refashioning it to suit your purposes. That's a paraphrase. Yeah. Um, but 
I don't think, you know, we always say we don't want them to do that. But as Christians, yeah. <clears throat> we shouldn't do that either. If if there's a word that means something to a, a group of people that are very, seem to be emerging in very much unity about what their authority is, the way that they think the world works, and then try to apply that as a positive term for Christians, I just feel like mm. it's so confusing because then you really just have a word that's a catch-all for any type of changing your mind. And if the yeah. word means everything, then it means nothing. If it just means, tweet, oh, Tweet I, that, tweet that. Yeah, <laughs> well, put it in the book. But yeah. uh, I'm not on Twitter anymore. As Bodie yeah. Bauckham said, I'm not sanctified enough for Twitter. My life has vastly improved since I'm not on Twitter. I mean, I go, I lurk on Twitter, but I don't have a personal account on Twitter. But mm. um, but that's, that's it, isn't it? If it means everything, then it means nothing. And if it just means changing yeah. your mind, well, then the, the person who grew up a Presbyterian and then converts to becoming a Southern Baptist deconstructed their Presbyterianism. I mean, at, at some point, it just gets silly to use the word. And so yeah. I think that it's, for me, as I'm really thinking this through, I think it's helpful, like we mentioned earlier, to separate the individual people who are experiencing something really painful from the, a movement that has an agenda. And, yeah. and that's what we're really going after to define and talk about and define as this type of new cultural religion that is so very evangelistic. I mean, they will take your money to buy a T-shirt, to give you a conference. There are therapist uh, sites and counseling sites all over that are dedicated. I mean, it's, it's mm. become a business in many ways. Um, and yeah. I'm not criticizing people for making money for what they're doing. That's not the point of saying that. But to act like it's just sort of mm. this, this poor people that are going through this difficult thing, that's not the whole story there. And I think that's why it's so important mm. to really think about definitions and how we're using the word. Because one observation, Tim, that I've made as I've, especially this week, as I've been traveling, I've just been uh, immersing myself in the TikToks and Instagrams and Twitter pages of some of this um, movement is that it's really clear that there is such unity on the fact that human beings are not inherently sinful. And we need to look inside of ourselves to figure out what we think is good and moral and healthy and moving us toward our own definition of wholeness. And that all mm -hmm. sounds really good, right? You want someone to be healthy. You want someone to be whole. But if we're just looking to ourselves to mm -hmm. guide us there, if Christianity is true, then that moral compass, that nature is broken. It's like a broken mm -hmm. compass. And mm -hmm. so that has to be realigned with the truth. And so according to Christianity, that is done by immersing yourself in the word of God and letting that transform you and conform you to the image of Christ, which means something biblically. That's really the biggest difference, I think, is that in deconstruction, they might appeal to certain scriptures for certain things. They might like certain parts of scripture. They might reinterpret parts of scripture but at the bottom of the whole thing, they're not going to scripture as their authority for truth. So it's really a matter of authority. Are you going to be your own authority or are you going to let everything that you think and believe be filtered mm -hmm. through scripture? And I think that's another really strong reason why Martin Luther was not a deconstructionist. And yeah. we might not agree with all of his views. We may not think he got things right, but ultimately he believed we are, of course, created in the image and likeness of God. And because of that, we all have inherent worth and value and dignity. But we've all distorted that image in one way or another. And for Luther, he was trying to get back to the truth of Scripture. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if anything, I've argued this even in my work on progressive Christianity, because in progressive Christianity, they'll say that too. They'll try to claim Luther as a progressive. And my point yeah. is, no, it was the church that had gone progressive. And, and mm -hmm. Luther was saying, we have to get back to the Word of God. And so that's a huge difference as well. Mm -hmm.